Hello friends, how are y'all doing? I am so happy to be getting back into the swing of things or at least partially. I'll let you know real quickly, we do have a new addition added to the family. We not only will hear some of the snoring of our 140 pound Irish wolfhound, but now you'll also hear those sweet, sweet sounds of a newborn baby. So we've got our own personal symphony in the background so if you hear any strange noises you'll know what they are if you are new here a very warm welcome we are so grateful to have you welcome to our homestead in the middle of the ozarks where we are once again in the middle of a snowstorm that all said let's get right into business i'm really excited about today's episode we will be kicking it off with the beginning phases of decorating baby eyes nursery and by the way i'll be sharing an official announcement of her birth along with her name and you'll be seeing a lot more of her in our future videos as well but going back to the video, I will also be sharing with you, in my opinion, the top five beginner plants that I would recommend if you're just now jumping into the plant world or have plans to do so in the future. I will be showing you some really easy care tips for those particular plants. Also stay tuned for a couple of my favorite, very simple, quick and easy dessert recipes, as well as a few more Valentine's activities for which I had quite a bit more planned, but I will save all of those materials and ideas, I guess for next year. So keep an eye out for that. With all that said, let's get to what you came here for. So when possible, I like to dedicate quite a bit of time when it comes to my projects. That said, the second we found out we were pregnant, I got right to planning the nursery. I like to keep a really loose vision or concept of what I have for the space because a lot of it is dependent on what I'm able to find. Because I like vintage and antique find so much, normally the foundation of all of my spaces really revolves on those pieces that I'm able to come across and find. This approach does take time and patience. We went to many antique events, many of vintage stores, and honestly, we are continually looking. When I say we, I do mean Lola and I, in case you're wondering, as the three boys tend to have their own pastimes that they prefer. By the way, thank you, Blake, for allowing Lola and I to do this all the times that you do. Going back to taking on this approach when it comes to your designing and decorating, it really takes patience, as I said previously, and being okay with living with some blank spaces and blank areas until those perfect pieces are finally found. In fact, sometimes I've lived with areas that really need to be filled for years. I personally would rather wait until I find the perfect piece that really makes me happy and that I feel is just essentially made for that area rather than just going to the store and picking up something to fill the space for the sake of filling the space. The one thing I knew from the very beginning was which room we were going to use for the nursery. This room had kind of become the catch-all room when I had random pieces of furniture that I had found but wasn't quite sure where I wanted to put it. I would stick it up in this space and just pray that when we gave home tours for anybody who were new to our house, I always was sure to make excuses for the room. That said, I did exactly what I am encouraging you not to do. I plopped a few pieces that I had laying around for the sake of filling the walls and just called it a day. I was really feeling uninspired by the space and unfortunately it succumbed to one of my personal design don'ts. Just know I'm definitely preaching to the choir as I'm sharing these tips with you. Mm -hmm. 
So first things first with her room. For me, design is very much about a feeling. So the very first question that I asked before I tackled her room was, how do I want to feel when I walk inside of the space? And my answer was, I wanted to feel light and airy and just overall ethereal. There are so many large windows and such great light that I really wanted to complement that and play off that feature. Secondly, there's no closet space. This room was never intended to be a bedroom, but I had a few ideas of how I could make sure that she had plenty of storage. Actually combating that issue ended up resulting in one of my favorite features in the room. That said, don't ever let a design flaw or an eyesore within a room keep you from pursuing the vision that you have for that space. Just step back, take some time, and be willing to think outside of the box. So I'm gonna spread her room out over a few videos just because I thought it would flow better and I think if I really condensed it into one, it would end up being way too long and maybe a little bit redundant. I will say the finished result of this room happens to be my favorite project that I have ever done and not to toot my own horn in the very least, but I honestly feel like it is my best work. But let's not put the cart before the horse and let's begin with the very first piece that I found for the room. So one of my favorite places to find really unique and interesting pieces is at one of the semi-annual vintage fairs that we try to attend at least once a year. This year we got lucky enough to make it to two of them, both in which we came home with a carload full. So her very first piece we found right inside this little house that you see here. We had made it through the entire fair. My very swollen feet were succumbing to the effects of pregnancy and I was just ready to go when I asked the two younger kiddos, yes, I did happen to take the youngest with us as well, were quite finished. To be fair, I was too but I asked if the kiddos had enough in them to make it through that same little house just one last time. As we were walking out, I looked to my right and I saw it. Somehow I had missed it the first time we went through. Upon first sight, I knew it would be perfect for her room. And without further ado, here she is in all her glory. She wasn't quite as sparkly new when we first set eyes upon her. We found some bird nest in there. It looked like maybe she had been in a barn for many, many years, but I was not dismayed in the slightest. Also, if any of you have bought furniture pieces, you know that a lot of times they come with that very distinct old smell to them. This is one of my least favorite characteristics of an old piece of furniture, but if you are finding yourself in a similar situation or that odor is something that has caused you not to purchase something that you loved in the past or currently, I've got the perfect solution for you. This very simple one-step process will have your furniture better than new. So if you've got a similar issue that you're dealing with, simply take a small bowl, fill it with baking soda, and close it inside the drawer. Do this for each drawer that needs it. I usually leave it in about a few days and you will be good to go. I'm usually a really big proponent in leaving pieces in their original state but for this I thought it would be really cute to add a little bit of a pattern inside the drawers. I ended up finding some really affordable peel and stick wallpaper on Amazon. If I don't forget I will post a link in the description box below. If y'all want to leave a comment asking if I happen to forget and that will prompt me to go ahead and put that in there. But yes, I just wanted to give it a try. It wasn't a big deal if it didn't end up sticking or working, but it actually turned out really well. For any of you who have any experience lining your drawers, you probably are cringing at my methods, but in my mind, it was the most simple approach. I will say a box knife or an exacto knife would have made this process so much easier. Because these drawers weren't perfectly straight, I 
took the paper, laid it inside of it, and folded creases wherever it needed to be cut. I then cut along the crease, peeled it apart to reveal the top half of the sticky portion, and laid her in. The reason why I kept some of the backing on was that I was afraid that the piece was actually going to stick to itself. I would highly recommend not peeling off the entire backside all at once. the next video will have a lot more nursery heavy content. I'm still trying to figure out how long exactly I should be making these videos, but we will eventually get there. So let's move on to a subject I've had many of you ask me about, and it just so happens to be one of my favorite topics to discuss. In my opinion, there's no better way to bring the outdoors in and liven up a space than by adding plants. I remember a time where I so admired plants in others' homes, only to remember the plants that had met their demise as a result of my care. I look back at the plants that I was choosing and they were definitely pretty, but they weren't the least bit practical, not only for my lifestyle, as well as environmental factors. That said, I've compiled a list of five plants that are really beginner friendly and irregardless of maybe your lack of humidity or the lower light within your home, these plants should be good to go. My goal is by the end of this segment, you will either be revitalized and ready to tackle the plant process all over again, or have enough confidence to go and purchase your very first plant. I will say when choosing these plants, I did heavily take into consideration how easy it is to find them. I have seen these within big box stores, local hardware stores, even grocery stores. So these should be pretty easy to find for you as well. So the number one plant I have decided as the easiest plant to care for and keep alive is the snake plant. They do really well in lower light conditions. I will say to keep your plants the happiest as possible, make sure and place them in the brightest area of your house, of course, outside of direct sunlight. If you don't know what direct sunlight is, if you place your hand in front of the light, there will be a shadow cast. For my second beginner friendly plant, I have chosen the ZZ plant. I will say the number one question when it comes to plant care is when and how much to water them. This doesn't go for all plants, but a general rule of thumb, especially when it comes to these easy care plants, is to let your plant dry out completely, not half an inch, not one inch. Let it dry out completely before watering it again. As far as how much, make sure every inch of the soil has been completely soaked through and don't let your plants stand in that water. Make sure there is a drainage hole for the excess water to come out. Plant number three, I have picked the pothos, more specifically the golden pothos. There's a marble queen pothos that is a little bit harder to care for, but I'd still fall into the beginner category if you happen to have your eyes set on one of those. The beginner friendly plant on the fourth spot on my list is the philodendron. If you're looking for a vining plant or one that would go great hanging from the ceiling or off the wall, both the pothos and the philodendron are really great options. And the last pick, but not the very least at all, is the Monstera Deliciosa. I have seen this plant mislabeled so many times, I'm not sure why, but it does have a very distinct look and it is pretty easy to identify. If you're looking for a plant that will grow really large in a very short amount of time, a plant that will take up a fair amount of space pretty quickly, this is a great option for you. So I am never opposed to continually talking about plants. If you're interested in that, there's a lot more where that came from. So just let me know in the comment section if you'd like me to throw more plant content within each video. So 
one of Lola and my go-to desserts to make are cookies. Lola and I will look for any excuse to bake for people and cookies are really transportable and just one of our go-to desserts when it comes to handing them out or delivering them to people that are in our lives. Valentine's Day happens to be one of those occasions. So during this video, we are going to be making heart-shaped sugar cookies. They are no spread. They are quick, easy, have very few ingredients. For the icing, we're going to be dyeing it using beets. But all that aside, let's just cut straight to the chase and get into it. Pause if you need to. Once you've got all your ingredients gathered, you're going to preheat your oven to 350. Next, you'll combine your butter and sugar together until it is light and fluffy. This process takes a few minutes. Next, add your vanilla and your egg and beat that until combined as well. Once those ingredients are all combined, add your baking powder and flour. Careful not to overmix. You will mix these ingredients together until it forms a single unit, almost like Play-Doh. Take your dough, flour the surface it will be sitting on and roll it out. I prefer for the dough to be about a quarter inch before I start using my cookie cutters. Because we are almost inevitably making desserts last minute, one reason I love this dough so much is because you don't have to refrigerate it before baking. Now it's time for my favorite part. Once you've got your dough all rolled out and even, grab your favorite cookie cutter and go to town. Once this is complete, you're going to pop them in the oven for about seven minutes, depending on their size. I will say these are not meant to be golden brown. Go ahead and take them out once they look fully cooked. I decided to do an ombre icing this year. For this, you don't have to do separate bowls. Just simply add more food coloring as you go. Start lighter and then add more and more as you move towards a darker color. I did use beets to to dye this icing. If you're wondering, you can't taste it at all. Natural dye tutorial to come. that pretty much draws this video to a close. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. We've already got quite a few things in the works for our next upcoming video, so keep your eye out on that. If you enjoyed this, I'd really appreciate if you would give this video a like and subscribe. If you don't want to miss any of our future content, go ahead and hit that notification button. I also normally let everybody know in advance on my Instagram account. My handle name is at Ozarks Dwellers. Thank you once again. I am so grateful for you and your support. I'd like to wish you a very happy early Valentine's Day and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.